Yo, Kepi's guy here. Hey, so I want to talk to you guys about how to read a graph. A lot of people are getting into measurements now. All of our modern day receivers have some sort of app. They also have their own calibration. So it's more at our fingertips than ever being able to really calibrate our sound systems, whether that's two channel, whether that's home theater, the mixture of the both. So I'm actually going to turn on this screen recording here for you guys. This is my room correction, Anthem Art Genesis, and it's really cool because it allows me to not only calibrate my system, but I can see the graphs of how things were before versus what they are after, and I can make my changes if I want to. But we need to understand when we're looking at a graph, what are we actually looking at? How do we digest this? So this is just a basic measurement. This is my front left speaker in my room, right? This is what I've measured. This is the frequency sweep. So this graph here is showing you the different frequencies that the speaker is capable of playing and at what volume at my listening position. So how you create a graph first, well, you need some sort of software. Room EQ Wizard is a excellent and free software for you to get a mic and measure your room width. Like I said, this has room correction in my Anthem Avium 70. So find something that you can use to generate a graph with. Of course, you'll need a microphone, a calibrated microphone to make your measurements with. But here's what we have. So I measured this left speaker in my room in my listening position, meaning my microphone is positioned where I sit and I ran a frequency sweep from 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. So that's what it sounds like, right? It takes that measurement and then the system shows you on a graph how low or how high, how loud or how soft all those frequencies were and they put it on a graph. So this is what this line is in red. It is my speaker and its frequencies. At the bottom here, what's this, the X axis? I'm gonna get roasted, I can't remember my X and Y axis, it's been forever. The bottom line down here, this is the frequencies, 15 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. That's the bottom floor. The left side here is the dB levels. So how high, how loud the frequencies were playing. So for example, right here at 100 hertz, if I look on my graph, that's about 73, 72 decibels. This one, this peak right here, let's see where this kind of lines up. We can call that maybe 40 hertz in that ballpark and that's playing about 82, 83 decibels. Let's do an easy one right about here. So in this area here, this is 70 decibels, about 25 hertz, something like that. So that's how you read a graph. You look at your frequencies and how loud they are. So that's the easy part, right? That's we probably knew that already. So now look at our line. What is our line telling us? Yes, these are all the frequencies in order from low to high telling me how they play, but how do we know if this is a good graph, a bad graph, if I should fix this graph? Well, the goal of these graphs is to show you these valleys and these peaks, right? So peaks and valleys peaks and knolls, right? So this big tall mountain right here will be considered a peak, meaning this is you know, a high spot in the frequency. So around 40 hertz or so, it's at its loudest, right? And this is about 83, 82 decibels. Now, if we keep moving down, we see some of these valleys, these low spots. This one is right around 100 hertz. It's about 73, 74. There's another one about 170, 180 hertz. It's about 72 dB, so on and so forth. So your line shows you all these peaks and valleys. And if your peaks or valleys are extreme, then you know you have an issue. So now that we know how to read a graph, now that we know what our line is telling us and how to identify peaks and valleys, peaks and knolls, how do we know if this graph is good or not? Well, the goal is you want this line to be as smooth as possible. A lot of people, audiophiles, audio enthusiasts are chasing a flat line, meaning that this speaker is playing the frequencies, all frequencies at the same volume level at your listening position. Remember, this microphone that I calibrated this system with is placed in my seat. 
So this is not what the speaker is doing itself, it's what the room is doing to the speaker in that spot. So this line here overall is pretty good. How do I know? Because it's relatively flat. There are some issues here. Look at this peak right here one more time. This is about 40, 45 hertz. This is up there in the 82, 83 dB range, but look at my 100 hertz. It's maybe 10 decibels lower than my, my 50 hertz, 40 hertz range. That's an issue. So we wanna fix this, and that's where calibration comes in. We're not gonna get into calibration in this video. I've done plenty of videos about it, and I will do more in the future. I don't wanna get into that, <laughs> because that's a whole nother can of worms. I just wanna digest graphs, right? So this peak here versus this valley, there's a big difference. There's 10 hertz of volume. What does that mean to you? Well, when you're sitting where that microphone is, when you're sitting in your seat and you're watching that movie or you're listening to that piece of music, it's more evident in music, when you hear a 40 hertz note, you're thinking, yeah, that sounds good. It has a lot of chest bass, it's thumpy, you love it. But your 100 hertz is an issue. There's not a lot of volume in comparison to the 40, 45 hertz. This 100 hertz region is very important. This is around where the voices are, especially male voices. Human voices kind of lie here. Females, of course, are a little bit higher. But my voice, for example, it's fluctuating between 70 hertz up to 80, 90 hertz, depending on my inflections. A lot of the movies you watch, a lot of the ambient sounds, they 100 hertz is a very important section. Not only does 100 hertz come from your speaker, but it comes from your subwoofer. Of course, this is just my front speaker. But we want to make this better. Now, there's a rule of thumb in home theater and just audio in general. This pertains to car audio too. It's always better to cut a frequency, not boost it. So now that we know how to read a graph, digest it, we need to know how we fix a graph and make it better. What I would wanna do, I would try to raise some of these valleys a little bit, and you can do that multiple ways. One, you can simply get a DSP and raise that frequency, or maybe you have the ability to do it in your software. Maybe you wanna add two or three dB in your system. Great, maybe that'll work for you. Or maybe you wanna lower the 45 or 40, 40 hertz region, you can do that too. Typically, it's safer and better to lower the volume on certain frequencies than it is to try to bring frequencies up. Because remember, this is how it sounds in your seat, not the speaker itself. So if you're cranking 100 hertz, trying to get it 10 dB louder, well, you're probably gonna blow your speaker or you're gonna, you know, you're gonna start to smell it, distortion, things like that. You don't wanna boost too high, if at all. So I would probably lower this frequency. Now, of course, like I said, raising or lowering the volume is one method of fixing this graph, but maybe placement would be better. The first thing that I personally would do to this left speaker is move it off the wall. In my home theater, my speakers are actually pretty close to a corner, maybe a foot, foot and a half off the wall, but they're kind of tucked away in the corner. And that's why I have this 40, 45 hertz boost of bass in my left speaker because of where it's placed. You can start to slowly pull your speaker up and continue to run that measurement over and over and watch your graph change. As you turn your speaker or pull it forward or push it back, the graph will start to change ever so slightly. You want the graph to be smooth. So I would pull my speaker off the wall a little bit or I have port plugs that I can put into the ports that are on the back of the speaker to help get rid of some of that boundary gain that that wall is causing me in my room. And that will lower those lower notes and help them be more in line with the rest of the frequencies which are actually really good. So now we know how to read a graph. We know what the X and Y axis are telling us. We know how to identify peaks and valleys. We know which ones are extreme and which ones are not. So we're making good progress. Now we know how we can help these peaks and valleys. We can cut some frequencies. We can boost a few frequencies, but not too much. Gotta be careful. Or we can simply move our speakers around in our room and watch how that changes the sound in our seating position. 
graphs are awesome because it's not always easy to hear the differences that moving a speaker makes. It's very hard for us to say, yeah, 40 hertz, terrible, 75 hertz, ooh, 69, not good. We don't know that just by listening necessarily, but a graph puts it visually so we know what problem we are trying to attack. So that's what these graphs are all about. So graphs are great for making changes, but they can also show you some problems with how you have things set. For example, maybe a subwoofer is too loud or your crossover is set incorrect. Check this out. I switched this to subwoofer number two. And this subwoofer, I intentionally set the crossover too high. So you guys can see what's going on with this. So again, same, same graph, frequencies on the bottom, the level or DB on the left going up and down. Look at this graph here. We have peaks, we have valleys, we have everything in this. But notice more importantly, this is the subwoofer. And we're getting measurements all the way into the two kilohertz range. That is not good, right? So what this graph tells me is not only do I have a lot of peaks and nulls to take effect, but I have my crossover incorrect. Your sub should not be playing much over 120 hertz, maybe 150. Some people even push it to 200 hertz. Great, maybe you like that mid chest bass. 200 hertz is, is well more than enough for your sub. This is playing almost three, 4K of frequencies. That's very high. That is bleeding into upper mid range tweeter range now. That's crazy. So this graph not only shows me the inconsistencies in bass, in my room, but it also shows me that the crossover wrong. Again, I in intentionally placed this sub the wrong way and set the crossover wrong for this demonstration. You can see that the crossover is an issue. You need to go into your system and set your crossover correctly and cut those frequencies that are playing too high. There is no need for your subs to be playing much over 120 Hertz. Again, we still have our peaks. We still have our valleys. The goal of this is to make this smooth. Now this is without room correction. Of course, I can turn on all these other graphs here and it'll show you what room correction has done for me. But that's not the point of this video. This is just showing you how to read a graph. This is all over the place, right? And you may not be able to hear that just by watching a movie or listening to a little bit of music. You may be able to see, okay, I have a really big emphasis on 50 hertz for some reason, but not a lot of bass down there at 20 hertz or whatever the case is. You might be able to detect that, but a graph will show you just how severe it is. If you've never measured your room, I recommend either getting into the hobby of measuring or bringing somebody in who is really versed with this kind of thing so that you can take your system to the next level. If you've never calibrated your room with a graph, with a sound meter, with a SPL meter, you may think your room sounds good, and it probably does, but you don't know. There's a whole new level to unlock. One thing that I didn't mention in the last clip on how to fix things like peaks and nulls, of course, volume, changing your levels, moving your speakers around, but I didn't mention how important acoustic treatment is too. Throwing the proper panels in the right spots around your room will make your sound so much easier to calibrate. Sometimes the graph is so bad that placement won't help you, <laughs> that cutting and boosting frequencies won't help you. Sometimes the room is, is so involved with your sound that you have to treat it with acoustic treatment. And there are a ton of types of acoustic treatment to help this graph. For me personally, this graph is so all over the place that yeah, I would start with placement first and move it around. Then I would go and see if I can't cut a few frequencies, maybe add some delay, whatever, make sure my phase is right. But for sure, with a graph this bad, your room has way too much influence on the sound to the point where it's now time for some sort of acoustic treatment. Bass traps, um, diffusers, absorption panels, you know, the panels that are in the ceiling, they make sense for your room too. There's a lot of different acoustic treatment that will have a huge impact on the sound. I wholeheartedly vouch for room treatment. I have some in my room and I want some more. Um, it helps with the whole entire frequency spectrum, not just one thing or another. So 
I'm gonna leave it at that. Leave me some of your secrets with graphs. How do you digest graphs? Do you measure with graphs? What do you guys do to make sure your room sounds the best? Leave me that down below in the comment section. Hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already, and we will see you in the next video. Kick this guy out. Peace.